Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate solving for a mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium and I'm going to use a Battle of the Sexes game. Now I should say I do have another video which introduces mixed strategies more generally so I'll link to that video above in the description as well. I'll list my other game theory videos that will give even more background if that's what you need. For this video though, I'll just start by setting up the game. So I have a two by two matrix. We have two players, I'll just call them player one and player two. And our players are choosing whether to go swimming, that's our action swim, or to go hiking, that's our action hike. The worst case scenario for either of our players is if they end up not doing their chosen activity together. So both players will get zero if one of them plays swim and the other plays hike. Player one really likes to swim in though, so if both of our players play swim, then player one gets a relatively high outcome of three, while player two, they'll get a payoff of one. Player two doesn't really like swimming, but they like it that they're doing something with player one. Player two really likes hiking though, so if both of our players play hike, player one will get an outcome of one. Player one doesn't really like hiking, but they like doing things with player two, uh, but player two gets that higher outcome of three. Now our game is constructed under full information. Everything is common knowledge. Our players choose simultaneously and there is no repetition of the interaction. And what we will see once we allow for mixed strategies is this game actually has three Nash equilibria. We have two pure strategy Nash equilibria and one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now you can find the pure strategy Nash equilibria pretty easily just by looking at the table actually. And I have some other videos that show that process. Again, you can just check the description for those videos, but I'm not going to show that process here because we're going to end up finding those Nash equilibria when we find our mixed strategy Nash equilibrium anyway. So I'll just go ahead and introduce mixed strategies to this game. So player one, I'll say they will play swim with probability R and hike with probability one minus R, while play, player two will play swim with probability Q and hike with probability one minus Q. Now, when we find our mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we're going to think about the best responses of each player to the strategies of the other player, and then check if there are any outcomes where the best responses intersect. So in this case, player one's best response will be their best choice of R to the various values of Q that player two could play. And player two's best response will be their best choice of Q to the various values of R which player one could play. Now, because we're dealing with probabilities too, because we wanting to evaluate the payoffs associated with each outcome, we're going to have to calculate what we call our expected payoffs for each player. So our expected payoffs will be like our regular payoffs, except we're going to weight each possible payoff with the probability of its occurrence and then sum them together. We can then find our best responses by comparing the expected payoffs associated with our player's strategies. So for player one, for instance, let's think about the expected payoff associated with them playing swim. So we're on the top row of our table here, that's player one playing swim. So I'll just write up here as well, our expected payoff, I'll just notate that big E of player one, so subscript one of playing swim. Well, with probability Q, player two will also play swim. And so player one will get a payoff of three. So that's a payoff of three with probability Q. And with probability one minus Q, player two will play hike. And if that happens, player one gets the payoff of zero. So just simplifying this here then, that zero will cancel the one minus Q in the back brackets. And so the expected payoff of playing swim for player one is equal to three Q. We can do the same thing for hike, which would be our bottom row. The expected payoff of player one for playing hike is equal to, well, with probability Q, player two will play swim. And so player one would then get the payoff of zero. And with probability one minus Q, player two will play hike. And so player one will get a payoff of one. So the expected value of playing hike for player one is equal to, well, just zero plus one minus Q. So just equal to one minus Q. Now our best response will be the strategy that maximizes our expected payoff. So for player one, for instance, we're just going to say if the expected payoff of choosing swim is greater than the expected payoff of choosing hike, player one should just play swim with certainty. So as a pure strategy, and this means setting R equal to one. 
Algebraically then, if 3q is greater than 1 minus q, so 3q is the expected payoff of swim and 1 minus q is the expected payoff of hike, and then we can solve for q, so we add q to both sides, so if 4q is greater than 1, then we divide both sides by 4 and we see if q is greater than a quarter, so q is the probability that player 2 chooses, just reminding you, Player one's best response is to play swim as a pure strategy, so setting r equal to one. Likewise, if player one's expected payoff of choosing hike is higher than the expected payoff of, of swim, player one's best response should be just to choose hike as a pure strategy, so playing hike with certainty, and that corresponds to setting r equal to zero. So if, well, the expected payoff of hike is one minus q, if that's greater than three q, once we solve for q, so we add q to both sides and divide by four. So if q is less than a quarter, then player one's best response is just to play hike as a pure strategy, set r equal to zero. So we know if q is greater than a quarter, player one should play swim as a pure strategy, so set r is equal to one. And if q is less than a quarter, well, player one should play hike with certainty, so r is equal to zero. An interesting question is what happens when the expected payoffs of swim and hike are exactly equal to one another. And so this will be when 3q is equal to one minus q. And so that solves for when q is equal to a quarter. And actually when player two plays q is equal to a quarter, player one will be exactly indifferent between hike and swim. And this also means that when player two plays q equal to a quarter, Player one is also indifferent between what weighting, so what probability that they place on hike or swim. So it doesn't matter what R they choose, and actually any R1 minus R combination will yield exactly the same payoff. And the way I like to think about it is that when Q is equal to a quarter, any R is a best response. Now, if this is a bit confusing for you, we can play around a bit with the algebra to demonstrate what's happening. So kind of step one, using our expectations, we can check if Q is equal to a quarter, we can see the expected payoff of playing swim would be equal to, well, three times Q, so three times a quarter, so three quarters. And the expected payoff of hike is one minus Q, so if Q is equal to a quarter, then we get three quarters. So when player two plays a quarter, you can see quite clearly that player one's expected payoff from playing swim and hike are exactly the same. And then to show you that it doesn't matter what R they choose at this point, we can construct a new expectation. This time, what I want to understand is what is player one's expected payoff associated with play, playing various combinations of R and one minus R given that Q is equal to a quarter. Now, like our other expectations, this expectation will be equal to the sum of the possible outcomes weighted by their probabilities of occurrence. So, well, with probability R, player one will play swim, and we know the expected payoff associated with swim is three quarters, given that we're setting Q equal to a quarter. And we add to that with probability one minus R, player one will play hike, and they will get the expected payoff of playing hike, given that Q is equal to a quarter, which is also three quarters. And so then we can check what happens for, for different values of R. So say R is equal to 0.2. So player one plays swim with probability 0.2 and hike with probability 0.8. Then the expected payoff will be equal to 0.2 times three quarters plus 0.8 times three quarters, which is just equal to three quarters. If we say R is equal to 0.5, that means we play swim with probability 0.5 and hike with probability 0.5. The expected payoff associated with playing R equal to 0.5 is just equal to 0.5 times three quarters plus 0.5 times three quarters, which is three quarters. And you can try with any other value of R, it will always come to three quarters. It doesn't matter what R is equal to when Q is equal to a quarter. Our player one is completely indifferent between swim and hike. So they are indifferent between any value of R. So indifferent between playing swim and hike with any particular probability. Now let's see what this all looks like on a diagram. I have left player one's best responses that we found here before on the left. And I'm just going to start by putting two axes up. On the vertical axis, I'm going to track R. That's the probability that player one plays swim. So up here where R is equal to one, this corresponds to player one playing the pure strategy swim. Down the bottom here where R is equal to zero, 
This corresponds to player one playing the pure strategy hike. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to put all of the values of Q. That's the probability that player two attaches to swim. So over here where Q is equal to one, that's associated with player two playing the pure strategy swim. And at the origin here, that's where Q is equal to zero. That's associated with the pure strategy hike for player two. So I'll clear the screen to make some room and thinking about drawing out player one's best responses to all of the possible values of Q, I'll draw out this in a green line. So we know that if player two, for instance, plays any Q greater than a quarter, so I'll just grab a quarter. And so we're thinking for those values of Q that are greater than a quarter, we know that player one's best response is to play swim. So that's to set R is equal to one. And R equal to one is up here. So it will be a horizontal line at R is equal to one over all those values where Q is greater than a quarter. Now, if Q is less than a quarter, player one should play hike as a pure strategy. That's where R is equal to zero. So we find those values of Q, which are less than a quarter, and we're going to set R equal to zero across those values. So that's another horizontal line, but just over the axes, that's where R is equal to zero. Now, when Q is exactly equal to a quarter, any value of R is a best response. It doesn't matter. So we draw a line up, which covers all of the values of R because it doesn't matter. And so we have this green stepped line here that shows player one's best responses as Q changes. Right, let's do the same thing for player two. Let's think about player two's best responses to player one's possible plays of R. And we start by thinking about constructing player two's expected payoffs. Well, player two could play swim, and if they did, we would be on this column here. So we have the expected payoff associated with player two playing swim is equal to, well, with probability R, player one will also play swim, and so player two would get the outcome one. And with probability one minus R, player one will play hike, and they will get the outcome of zero. So this simplifies to R. If player two plays hike, we would be on this next column. With probability R, player one would play swim, and so player two would get zero. And with probability one minus R, player one would also play hike, and so they would get the outcome three. Player two would get the outcome three. So this simplifies to three minus three R. In terms of our best responses then, we're just going to say, well, if player two's expected payoff of swim is greater than the expected payoff of hike, then player two's best response is to play swim as a pure strategy. So set Q is equal to one. So that's if, well, the expected value of swim is R, if that's greater than the expected value of hike, which is three minus three R. Solving for R, I can add three R to both sides. So if four R is greater than three, divide both sides by four. So if R is greater than three quarters, then player two should play swim as a pure strategy. So set Q is equal to one. On the other hand, if the expected payoff of hike is greater than the expected payoff of swim, then player two's best response is to play hike as a pure strategy. So that's setting Q is equal to zero. That amounts to the question of whether then three minus three R is greater than R. Solving for R, we can find, we add three R to both sides and divide. If R is less than three quarters, player two should just play hike as a pure strategy. Now, if we set our expected payoffs equal to one another, I'll let you guys do the algebra. You can probably, I hopefully guess what that will be. That will be if R is exactly equal to three quarters, we have the same situation where Q is equal to a quarter for player one. When R is equal to three quarters, player two is exactly indifferent between playing swim and playing hike. So any Q will be a best response. All right, let's go back to our diagram and draw this all out. Again, I have player two's best responses on the left-hand side here, and I've left player one's best response line that we found before in our diagram in green. I'll draw out player two's best response line in orange. So for player two, we see if R is greater than three quarters, player two's best response is to play swim as a pure strategy. So that setting Q is equal to one. So Q is equal to one is there'd be like a vertical line and I'm going to draw that over the values where R is greater than three quarters. If R is less than three quarters, player two's best response is to play hike as a pure strategy. So set Q equal to zero. So that will be right over our axis. That's Q is equal to zero. 
and I'm going to draw that just over all the values of R less than three quarters. When R is equal to three quarters, any Q is the best response. So we draw a line across all the Qs at that level and we have player two's best responses to all of the possible values of R. So let's just revisit this graph as a whole here. Our green line shows player one's best responses to player two's possible plays of Q. And the orange line shows player two's best responses to player one's possible plays of R. And what I hope you can see from the diagram here is that there are actually three points where our best responses intersect. And this corresponds to the three Nash equilibria of the game. There are two pure strategy Nash equilibria. So that's when both of our players are playing pure strategies to each other. That's where R is equal to one and Q is equal to one and where R is equal to zero and Q is equal to zero. So at these Nash equilibria, both players are playing swim or both players are playing hike. There is also one more mixed strategy Nash equilibrium though, which is at this middle intersection where R is equal to three quarters and Q is equal to a quarter. So let's write this all out. We have two pure strategy Nash equilibria, that's swim, swim and hike, hike. And we have one additional mixed strategy Nash equilibria, which is described by player one playing swim with probability three quarters and hike with probability one quarter, since we play hike with one minus R and R is equal to three quarters. And player two will play swim with probability Q is equal to a quarter. And so hike with probability three quarters, since the probability on hike is one minus Q and one minus a quarter is three quarters. So just when I've notated here as well, I just make it clearer, the first part, I'm just describing the probabilities that player one plays swim and hike, and the second part is associated with player two's probabilities. Now we can look to our diagram to check and try and understand the intuition behind why these points are actually Nash equilibrium. And you can note, for instance, and I'm just thinking about that mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, that if our players deviated from that point choosing any other Q or R, we would fall out of equilibrium. So if Q changed from a quarter to another probability that was less than a quarter, for instance, player ones would not be a best response. As we saw for any Q less than a quarter, the best response of player one is to choose R is equal to zero. And same for any Q greater than a quarter, the best response of player one is just to play R is equal to one. And using this sort of reasoning, you can see that our players fall out of these equilibrium outcomes if we try to start thinking about different combinations of probabilities. I should say though, that this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, this mixed strategy solution, at least I find, is just not as intuitive compared to other mixed strategy Nash equilibria that we get from other games. For instance, like matching pennies. So in games like Matching Pennies, our players really naturally want to outguess one another. And for other sorts of interactions like poker and other like sports-like interactions, that's really what the, the, the players are aiming for. They're aiming to beat one another through um, being uncertain about doing something surprising and they hope that the other player doesn't kind of guess that, guess it. So for these sorts of games, it makes sense that when we find mixed strategy solutions for these sorts of interactions, um, I find those equilibria a little bit more intuitive than say the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium that we saw here. This game already has kind of a pure strategy solution and they're certainly not trying to outguess one another our two players here the good thing about the battle of the sexes game is though that you can see our pure strategy and our mixed strategy Nash equilibria kind of next to one another and you can see that really it is all a continuum in any case my next video will be on matching pennies or a game similar to it because I think you get a different feel for the intuition with games like that. I do also have plans for another video as well where I will go through another Battle of the Sexes game and we can find all of the Nash Equilibria, but I'll just use different numbers. So I'll post that video in the description when it's done and hopefully that's useful for you because you can go to that video and just pause it after I've given you the matrix and then you can practice for yourself and, and then you can play the rest of the video and see if you've gotten it right. So that's it for this video though. I do hope that all of this has helped. Thank you so much for watching this channel and my stuff. Please like and subscribe and I hope you guys are having a great day.